What is up, guys? Pie Muffin here, and we are back with another Tales of Luminaria video. Uh, surprised to be making... I mean, not really surprised we knew there was going to be a stream, but with all the Tales of Arise stuff, I had kind of forgotten that this thing was even happening. But they had... Well, they had a Tales of, of Luminaria Japanese stream uh, where Tomizawa was there with, uh, you know, producers and stuff. And then they had an English video because obviously it's very hard to... Um, you know, you can't subtitle a live stream, um, you know, if it's live, you know, it just doesn't work that way. So they just pre-recorded a video where they had one of the, uh, uh, you know, community managers for Luminaria, which is this guy on the left, um, you know, kind of talk to one of the devs. Um, and I pretty much, I, half the reason I made these tweets is so I don't have to scroll through a 49 minute video, but... I will leave the link to this video down below for those who want to watch the Luminaria show. Uh, they talked about quite a number of things here. Unfortunate, and I'll start off with this. We have no release date yet. They st it still says coming soon. Um, there will, ha and I'm going to start with this. There will, however, be more information given at Tokyo Game Show, um, which really isn't that far away, honestly. So uh, within, I, I think it's actually. Uh, let me see. When is Tokyo Game Show? That, what? That's September. That's in a week. Okay, so like in six days, we're going to have more information uh, on the. Well, it depends which day it is. It goes to October 3rd. But, you know, within a few days of a week from now, uh, we'll have more information on the game. And they may want to give us uh, a release date then because right here they really showed us most I, I feel like the game is very close um with all the stuff they showed here there really isn't much else for them to show us besides the gotcha system and i guess how like you know character pages are gonna work and stuff like that um there is a number of things to talk about though um so let's just get started so first things first they started off you know they were talking about how this is a new tales game they were saying you know play tales of arise the most recent game that came out they were saying how they wanted to wait to reveal this information because they wanted people to play arise and enjoy that first uh and now have a title to kind of enjoy on the heels of arise you know to kind of keep that uh you know, to keep that uh, hunger sated, you know, because, I mean, I'm feeling it. I beat Tales of Arise. I, I had an enjoyable experience, and I want something new. So, uh, you know, this is exciting. Obviously, this is the fourth Tales mobile game that's currently live. Only two of them are playable in English. Well, this will be the second one. Um, but it's still nice to, you know, have something new. Um, so they first went over how there are two main federations, or main... Uh, organizations in this world there's the empire which i guess this is where the empire is and the federation which is right here so the federation seems to be more mystical while the empire seems to be more technical um and then there's a third group of people called adventurers which i guess will be like kind of like uh you know people who just kind of i mean it's adventurers you know uh members of neither military they in they investigate the mystery behind the primordial beast on their own. So the primordial beast seem to be like the main focus of this game. Um, but yeah, so there's three sets of characters. Now, let's talk about this. There are 21 characters at the start. These are our 21 main characters. And let me quickly explain how this is going to work. Why I say it's 21 main characters. Each character is a main character of this game. There's no like definitive main character. Each character, the way you're going to play this game is each character, you know, you'll boot up the game, you'll go to story mode, and you will select one of these characters, and you will start playing their campaign. Now, it's still going to work like a normal gacha game where there's going to be a cutoff point of the story because they're going to release more as time goes on. Some of this stuff I'm going to start and say early, um, but, it, you know, we'll pass it when we get down there. They're going to add a new episode each week of the game. Now, because there are 21 characters, that's not as crazy. They said each episode takes about an hour to complete. They want this to be a more casual Tales experience. You know, they don't want it to be, uh, I guess, as time-consuming as, like, you know, playing a Tales of the Rays chapter or a Crestoria chapter or even an Asteria chapter because those chapters take two, three hours to get through. Unless you're just a really fast reader and, uh, you know, kind of passing the dialogue. But these are our 21 characters, so you'll boot up the game, you know, you'll decide which character you like the most to start off with. 
Um, realistically, I think the character that draws me the most is either this guy right here. He looks like a punk. I really like him. Uh, or this girl right here. They showed her off a little bit. Um, she's got a different colored eye, which I think is cool. And she's also an archer. So I think that's kind of unique. But uh, I'm obviously going to play through all the characters. And I do want to mention, I don't know how I'm going to handle content on this channel. Because 21 characters, each with their own campaign, is going to be very hard to keep up with on a weekly basis. Um, obviously, not all 21 of them is going to get an episode every week. I think that's why they're going to do it weekly, is because it'll be a different character each week. So, um, it will be in your benefit to obviously keep up on all the different stories. And then, um, no, we'll, we'll get into the other stuff, because there is more to it than that to kind of explain it. But that's basically how it's going to work. There are 21 characters. They said... They also said, you will not have to, um, you won't have to pay anything to play as these 21 characters. So there's obviously going to be a gotcha system, because there's no, you don't make a free-to-play mobile game with no way to make money. I mean, you're just losing money at that point. So there's obviously going to be some kind of gotcha system. It might be costumes, you know, maybe you summon for different variants of the 21 main characters, and then you can use them. That's probably what it's going to be. Um... That, that's just my most likely bet, is that's how it's going to be. Or maybe you summon for, like, equipment. You know, maybe each kit you summon for weapons and stuff like that, which would be interesting because each of these characters fights with different weapons. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of works, but we'll have to wait and see how that kind of works. Um, but yeah, so 21 characters, pretty cool. Um, each character has its own story. Yeah, I already said that. Um, you know, there is no purchase needed to play as these 21 characters and play through their stories. Um, I guess you'll be able to level up and beat all the content, you know, without any extra stuff. Um, which makes me think that there's probably going to be, like, events and harder content that will require, you know, summons. But if you're just here for the story, I think you'll be able to play it just fine with these characters. Um, these are the characters from the Federation. These, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these eight characters are part of the Federation. Uh, Knights in Training and the teacher of the special elite class Blaze at Aegis Night Academy. So I would assume the teacher is either, just based on looks, I'm going to guess it's one of these two. Um, that's my best. Maybe this one, but I'm leaning between these two to be the actual teacher. Um, they also explained that these similar... I couldn't say see if they saw, said embryos or emblios, but uh, essentially they have these marks with this gemstone in their body that allows them to use high-level arts. Um, you know, if you don't have one of these, I guess you're not going to be a fighter in this world, or at least in the Federation. Um, these are the characters from the Empire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait, two, four, six. Yeah, I can count eight. Okay, so these are uh, the Chancellor, the Generals, the Soldiers who form the Empire's backbone. This is, I, I would assume, the Chancellor. I assume these two are Generals, maybe her as well. Uh, they always like to have a crazy girl in there. Um... And then the rest are obviously soldiers. Um, so pretty cool there. And then on the Empire side, they have something called a reactor. So it's a piece of equipment. So you can see it's this guy's outfit, I guess. You know, this thing that's kind of on his shirt, I guess, gets channeled into his weapons. And now that, that's how he's able to fight. So pretty cool there. Uh, and then we move over to the adventurers. These five characters right here are the adventurers. They kind of just go around and do their own thing. Uh, as we understood from before. Um, by the way, the game will have full English voiceovers. The 21 characters, the NPCs, everything you do in the game will be fully voiced in English, which I feel is a very ambitious project because I almost feel like it would be easier to voice... Well, no, I'll take that back. I was going to say I feel like it might be easier to fully voice Crestorian English, but the difference here is none of these characters exist in previous Tales titles, so you don't have to get back the same voice actors from specific things, whereas in crossover titles, it's a lot different. Um, but yeah, you can either choose to play in full English or full Japanese. I will obviously play in full Japanese, because I'm sure these characters at some point will come to the other mobile games, and I don't want to be thrown off by what the characters sound like. Um, we got names for a few of the first characters. We got Leo Forcade here, who seems to be like, I know there's no traditional main character, but he seems to be like the main focus. Uh, a passionate young man dedicated to the noble ideals his grandmother taught him. He enters the Knight Academy along with his friends, Celia and Hugo. 
which we're going to see here in a second, to defeat the Empire that destroyed his hometown. He joins Blaze to improve his skills alongside his companions. We have Celia Arvier, which was the one that, you know, one of the characters I'm most interested in because she's got, you know, the mark in her eye. That's her uh, uh, embryo or embryo. Um, she's Leo and Hugo's childhood friend. She enters the Night Academy with them and joins the ranks of Blaze, a natural caretaker. She always keeps a close eye on her friends, but a certain incident causes her to feel distant from them. Okay, that'll be interesting to learn about. And then Hugo Simon, uh, friends with Leo and Cel or Celia. I, can't, I called her Celica. Celia. Since childhood, during his activities as a member of Blaze, he became increasingly distrustful of the Federation until a meeting with August lured him to the Imperial side. Well, so we know he's not going to stay there. This was something they explained about, that even though each character's episodes are, you, you know, you can just play through one character's story, to understand the full concept of what goes on in this world, you will have to play all the different stories to understand where the story's going. Which, uh, I guess you probably would want to, uh, you know, maybe you do each episode of each character first, and then do episode two of each character, and then three, instead of just playing Leo's story all the way to where it goes, playing Hugo's story all the way it goes, it might be easier to do it the other way, because you'll see where everyone is at a specific point in time. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, one episode per week, so one of these 21 characters each week will get a new episode for you to play through, uh, which I still feel like is a lot, so I guess a lot is being put into this game. Um, I looked at the gameplay. They had, you know, if you watch the video, they show off the gameplay. Nice to see Pole Wiggles back since they weren't in a rise. Um, but the game does feel like it kind of plays like a rise, like a more loose. It still feels like Tails gameplay. You know, you're running around, you know, in a 3D environment. You know, it's a bit more open than usual Tails. But um, it's re it really feels like a hack and slash game. Um, so maybe a little less than a rise. Um, and it's, it, they really stated that they wanted it to be a casual experience. So you just run through the field, you kill a bunch of monsters with, you know, minimal effort, and then you continue with the story. So this game is clearly more geared towards people who want a good story experience rather than a crazy gameplay experience. The gameplay feels pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So, uh, do keep that in mind. Um, we have a lot of uh, people working on the game, uh, planning and production, Bandai Namco, development, Col Colopal Inc., uh, who I've been told is uh, good, I guess. Character design, Shun Seiki. Uh, apparently, the character designer, I think it was the character designer for this, uh, is the, uh, the designs are by the same people who worked on uh, Food Wars. Uh, I don't know anything about Food Wars, but uh, that's apparently where uh, that's coming from. We got a bunch of people working on the scenario writer writing. Uh, main music composer is Goshina. Uh, Goshina has been in uh, Tales of Legendia and Tales of Zestiria to give examples. And then the theme song is done by. Uh, there's going to be an opening and a closing theme song. I don't know why there's a closing. Like I don't. When would uh, when would an ending song even play? Um, but there's going to be an opening and ending. Um, like I said right here, they were playing a music video. Uh, that was playing part of the opening. Tales of Luminaria is getting an animation called The Fateful Crossroad. It's going to be similar to what Tales of Crestoria got, except the difference with this one is that this animation is going to take place in the middle of the game. So I assume this animation will probably come out after the game has been out for a little bit, and it'll probably take place um, after, you know, a few of the episodes. So it won't be the very beginning of the game, so you won't be able to be like, Okay, I'll watch the animation and then play the game because it probably won't make sense. Um, and that's pretty much everything they showed. Uh, they said there will be more at Tokyo Game Show. And they said pre-registration was live, but when the stream ended uh, or the video ended, I looked on my phone. I'm going to look again. Um, but I did not see Tales of Luminaria in the App Store. So let me just open my phone real quick. You're not going to see it on screen, but um, I do not see anything yet. So... Maybe it'll come out within the next few hours, but I would just uh, say um, keep in mind that pre-registration could go up soon. Uh, the fact that pre-registration is already happening makes me hopeful that the game is going to come out before the end of 2021. I am ex... I don't know how to really word this. I'm excited for the game, but I also are. I have some worries with the game. 
Um, it's not even really worries. The designs feel really weird for me. They don't look like Tails, but I think I can look past that and enjoy this game if the story's going to be good, if it has a good gotcha system, you know, for getting, you know, better units or better stuff for our units. I don't know what the gotcha system's going to be like, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on it right now. I don't really have much else to say until, uh, we've seen everything, you know, kind of see the menu screens for how we do stuff with characters, you know, level them up, equip them and stuff. And how the gotcha system is going to look. I think after that I'll have a better idea. And then, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll just have to fa Let me know down below. If you're someone who watches, you know, my Crestoria streams. Or, you know, stuff like that. How would you like to see me handle this? Would you like to see me do, you know, maybe do like playthrough style. Like I've been doing with Tales of Arise. Where each episode. Because if each episode's like an hour. I mean, I could have like a 40 minute video of me doing each episode. Uh, or would you rather me just play through the first set of episodes at release on my own and then each week just do a quick, you know, hour-long live stream where I play through each episode and continue onward? Because uh, that's what I ended up doing with Crestoria. The first four chapters I did not live stream or put up videos for. I just played through it myself. Uh, and then we started doing the live streams with Chapter 5. So definitely let me know how you guys want to see that. But that's going to be it, guys. That was quite a bit of information for Tales of Luminaria. Um, I will say I'm excited for the game, but I do have to see how it's going to work more. And I kind of wish it was like a uh, side, uh, you hold your phone on the side instead of holding it up. Because uh, it feels like really tiny, but I guess that's easier to hold. So for quick gaming, uh, that'll be nice. And I do hope that there's an auto battle, because if there's any farming that needs to be done in this game, uh, I think it would make things a lot easier. But we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone.